Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology again, nice to see you and today we are going to discuss finally on the series of Secrets of Ascendance. I had made one video named Secrets of Ascendance and many people liked it and appreciated it and they requested me to give the understanding of each and every ascendant. So here it is, let's start with the first zodiac sign Aries, yes, 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 we will talk of the Aries Ascendance, not the zodiac sign Aries. I've already spoken about it many many times back. I think last year I had made videos on Aries. So if you have not watched it, then it's there in the Astrology Basics playlist. Go and watch that. But today's video is on Aries Ascendance. We all know what an ascendant is, yes, what Lagna is. It is not sun sign, it is not moon sign. So the video on Lagna is also there in my astrology basics playlist if you do not know what is lagna or an ascendant please go there and watch it okay there you go if you are new to the channel and if you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation because you are an aries ascendant or any other ascendant leo cancer sagittarius pisces or you want to know about your marriage or career or any specific placement of your horoscope or if you want me to help you with any area of your life then please go to my website and book a one-to-one -one reading with me you will find the link of the website in the description of this video below okay and before i begin as i always say god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him and he will help you to understand the aries lagna okay so i said in the video last time that the lagna shows intelligence intelligence does not mean how quickly you can grasp things or how quickly you can understand things okay that is one part of intelligence but when i say intelligence it basically means where our human focus is going yes where our where we are focusing our energy on basically where the mind is going actually now moon will show the mind but the ascendant will show what our inherent disposition of our intelligence is okay so now for Aries ascendance, the peculiarity, the good thing is the zodiac signs and the houses are very similar, which means that the 10th house has the energy of Capricorn, the 11th house has the energy of Aquarius. So it is a very harmonious ascendant actually. So the first sign Aries is placed in the first house itself. So which means that whenever they think of themselves, which is the first house, they behave like Aries, which means that they are also very energetic. They are also very much headstrong. They are very determined. And this is a tamasic sign. So this shows that there can be too much ego sometimes in these people. When they think about themselves, the first house, yes, the first house shows themselves. So there, there can be uh, there can be a, this conception that I don't need anybody. I am all in all. I am the best. Nobody can challenge me. And yes, before I go in detail about all these you can also see for every planet okay so any planet which is sitting in aries will also behave like this so suppose any uh, you have uh, venus in aries then your venusian aspects can behave like this okay then the second house what is the second house and yes we will also discuss about the exaltation of the uh, lagna lord and the debilitation and why this happens and what to be what should we do and what should we not do so then the second house is having the sign Taurus because of which these people always like to eat food they always like to stay in family they always like to hoard assets for a long time actually okay they do not like to invest in those areas where they will have short gains they always think of long-term concrete financial gains that is because the sign Taurus is a fixed sign and it is also ruled by Venus and they are very well uh, educated in ways to communicate they may sometimes get their things done by speaking sweet words and for Aries ascendance this is a very big lesson because Venus is your second lord so whenever you want to get things done from others get things done not in a wrong sense but in a good sense suppose you want somebody's help then you should be a very sweet talker you should learn to talk soft you should learn to talk sweetly <laughs> don't uh, behave very aggressively because venus is not an aggressive planet like mars then the third house has the sign gemini 
so because of which their relationship with the younger siblings can be sometimes good sometimes bad sometimes they can be a bit frivolous because third house shows the uh, desires which a person has the seventh house will show the desires which we want to fulfill or enjoy with another intimate person and the 11th house will show desires which we want to fulfill at a collective level society with society okay but the third house will show our inner desires inner traits inner talents and these people also have many talents because mercury is the third lord it is a very versatile planet mercury is the prince who keeps going everywhere so this is one good thing at the same time this is one uh, problem also these people have you will see them that they will say oh today i have started singing today i have started dancing today i have started cooking and then what you end up doing oh we don't know but we are doing something new or the other so they are very good at initiating things uh, when it comes to the third house because of the gemini's energy but they can have difficulty in uh, sustaining it for a long period of time okay so if you are planning to give a job of creativity or a task of creativity to a aries ascendant then you need to ensure that mercury is well placed otherwise uh, they will seem very enthusiastic to start it but later on you may see that oh that person is not doing that person is just telling then the fourth house has the sign cancer because of which they are very much in love with their mother depending on the placement of moon because the sign cancer is all about love and comfort so whenever they want to buy property which is the fourth house they will always check comfort always comfort is their first priority in life when it comes to uh, luxury so suppose you tell them that oh this mobile is there this is a bit cheap that is a bit expensive but this cheaper one is not very comfortable it's not very luxurious luxurious not in a monetary sense but it should have some value you understand cancer shows those things which we value very much so they will value uh, that very much if they like and if they feel that this will not give me pleasure this will not make me happy the luxury then they will not take it they will not purchase it depending on the placement of moon and other planets sitting in the fourth house of course this will alter the results then they have the sign leo in the fifth house what's the fifth house fifth house is the house of children primarily and fifth house is the house of our creativity fifth house is the projection of our future fifth house shows the reason why we live in this world why we want to get up in the morning so whatever they believe they believe it very firmly whatever is their principles they believe it very strongly they like to stay with their ideals they are not those people who say that oh today i think maybe this is good tomorrow i think that is good no they are not like this they are they are very fixed they are very uh, headstrong when it comes to their own ideals and whenever it comes to children then they have very strong conceptions of what their children should be doing what they should not be doing what will be good for their children what will be bad for their children and because the sign leo is falling in the fifth house so because uh, because of that they are also too much uh, obsessed sometimes towards getting name fame especially at a bigger scale leo shows things which we like to do at a big scale big scale means big scale <laughs> because leo shows governments politics world leaders authorities politicians so they might sometimes want to do things at a big scale as they say na i want to do things big i want to become big one day so they may have these kind of traits and then the sixth house is ruled by virgo which means that the whenever they are uh, dealing with enemies they are very critical because virgo is a very critical sign they like to finish off their enemies totally <laughs> they do not like to keep enemies for very long and if they have enemies they will not just uh, hit them at the spot they will wait they will analyze they will perfectly see when they can do what they will see the weak points of the enemy they will see where the enemy is strong they will see where the enemy is good where the enemy is bad and by that they will decide depending on the placement of mercury of course that they now need to attack and when they need to back off because mercury uh, so virgo is a dual sign so they also know 
when to attack and when not to attack because sometimes this you know defense is the best at form of attack that you can have so they are very much calculative about their work and they can very much uh, do hard work also and they are very much detail oriented when it comes to work because virgo is a very detail oriented sign and they like to see the positives and negatives the pros and cons for every house uh, i mean for every kind of work they are doing and they are very much focused with health also because wherever the sign of virgo is we will have uh, too much focus in that area focus uh, not externally it can mean but whenever we think of that part we can be like oh there's some problem there you see we need to uh, make it right because virgo shows those things where uh, which are in problem sometimes so they can be too much obsessed about their uh, daily work daily routines yes day, their health etc these things can be there in them depending on place on the placement of mercury of course and then their seventh house is ruled by venus the sign libra is in the seventh house so whenever it comes to dealing with the opposite sex their nature is very venusian like see venus has two rashis one is taurus one other another is libra and libra is the mool trikon sign of venus so whenever they are with the other person with the other party not when they are themselves when they are with somebody else they tend to share things because libra is uh, showing those things which we share wherever libra is in your chart you will have a tendency to share things and do things together pertaining to that house okay so whenever libra is in the 7th house which will only be there for the aries ascendants then they like to do things together with others when they are in a group okay that they will always like to do and whenever the other person will ask something if that is in a group setting then they will try to negotiate because 7th house also shows negotiations and libra also so they will always try to negotiate they will not try to go to extremes they will always try to balance out things yes because libra is the sign of balance and this can be there with any uh, outsiders any people in general also and then the 8th house is ruled by the sign scorpio and scorpio is also the sign which is ruled by the ruler of the ascendant mars so mars rules aries and then mars also rules scorpio they say because of which sometimes these people can become too much intense so whenever the lagna lord is also ruling the 8th house it can happen that the people are very intense because 8th house shows our insecurity sometimes so there can be some insecurities and there can be some uh, hidden things of the past which are lurking in their heart which they may not express sometimes so because of that they need to take care that they do not do anything which is hidden i mean they do not do anything secretively they should do things in open they should not hide things from others but this tendency can be there in aries ascendants okay now some people will say oh no aries people don't do like this but i'm not talking of them i'm talking of their eighth house okay so whenever it comes to hidden things they may behave like a scorpio so these things can happen and then is the ninth house which is the house of religion dharma spirituality gurus and that's the house where the sign sagittarius falls in so sagittarius shows what we believe in life wherever sagittarius is and whichever planets are there we will be very hopeful regarding those planets those areas in life we will have a positive outlook there so they are very much positive towards things like religion spirituality now they can be atheists or they can be agnostic also or they may not be interested in god also that may be if the placement of jupiter is not good in the chart but in general they uh, will be very much uh, idealistic towards their own religion they can be a uh, bit strong sometimes not fanatical necessarily that happens if uh, rahu or ketu or some other malefics are aspecting the ninth house that can happen then but in general they are very much optimistic about god and spirituality and they always believe that uh, there is a higher power there is a higher existence which can which will benefit us if we go close to that existence okay because jupiter is a very great benefit so when it rules the 9th house these flavors can come and then comes the 10th house which has the sign capricorn or capricorn is a very rigid it's a very dry sign so when that falls in the 10th house this shows that these people 
have the ability to work even if they don't like sometimes now i will explain the exaltation and debilitation later let me first uh, go through the house so uh, the 10th house has a sign capricorn so sometimes they can feel that their workplace is making them too much of a dry person sometimes they might be forced to do things which even uh, they don't want to do but they will still end up doing it somehow <laughs> <laughs> that's their strength that even if they don't like something they can do it if they like it then they will obviously do even if they don't like then they will still do it because the sign capricorn tells you that sometimes you might have to do things which you hate okay they, but they will end up doing that also because it's in the 10th house and because it's the sign ruled by saturn so there's a lot of hard work and labor which is required so after a lot of hard work labor you will get success in life name fame status okay and then is the 11th house 11th house is the house of gains network circles associations so whenever they are in group of people they always talk of collective things which is aquarius which is like how to change the society how to bring good in the society how to do good for people how to do good for others and myself also included <laughs> so they will always think like this and whenever they are uh, with other people surrounded in a society then they will always think that how can i behave in a way which others will also like which others will also appreciate not only me okay so that will happen and then the 12th house has the sign pisces so whenever they uh, think of spirituality or abstract things or things which cannot be seen they get lost <laughs> this tendency is there in them sometimes because the sign pisces shows those things which we get lost in wherever pisces is we have a tendency to get lost in those things now that can be in a good way or a bad way lost in the sense that uh, we can feel that oh we don't know what to do in this area or there can be so much knowledge so much information that we are like we are overwhelmed leave it man leave it to god god will do whatever he wants so when it comes to spirituality traveling to uh, secluded places loneliness meditation they can get they can get too much loss sometimes now that's very good if the person is a yogi and doing spiritual practices that will benefit him very much but if the person is not then the person needs to take care that he does not run into addictions and all other nefarious activities which is there in kali yuga these days so that is what i wanted to say now regarding the ascendant itself ascendant is aries and it is ruled by mars so it's a fiery planet so there's a lot of energy in these people they have so much energy that at 12 o'clock in the night you tell them hey will you go there and they will be like yes we are going <laughs> and now see the best thing is the lagna lord which is mars gets exalted in the 10th house in the sign of capricorn actually okay which means that they like to go to a place where they will get high name high fame high status they like to work basically they like to go to a place where they will get recognition in life okay now at the same time if you see the 10th lord which is saturn gets debilitated in aries now how do you understand this that the lagna lord gets exalted in the 10th Well, the tenth lord gets debilitated in the lagna. It's a very difficult situation, right? So basically, what this means is that they like to do what they want, but they don't like to be told what to do. So whenever the tenth lord is in the lagna, it can happen that see whatever whichever planet is in the lagna, those things will be thrown to your head sometimes. So whenever the tenth lord is in the in the lagna for Aries ascendants, it can happen at times that. they might have to do some things which others are forcing upon them which means our authority is coming and sitting on their head that is what they don't like but they themselves like to become the authority so the lagna lord shows that they, they themselves and they like to go and sit in the 10th house which is the house of authority but if an authority tells them hey do this do that no they don't like to hear this <laughs> okay and uh, if you see uh, in the sign of aries surya also gets exalted okay and sun also rules their fifth house so fifth lord shows power position and all these things so they always like to be famous they like to be famous all the time okay 
the only problem is they don't like work and other authority people coming on to them and they like to be very famous and they also like to go to the house of a fame which is also the 10th house so this is a very peculiar uh, thing about them na fifth house also shows fame the 10th house also shows fame but the, f- the fifth lord is exalted the 10th lord is debilitated yes so here we have to understand the principle that sun is the karaka for the 10th house yes as the sign leo is there in the fifth house but as a karak it is the karaka for the uh 10th house it is also the karaka for the lagna and it is also the karaka for the 9th house so these people need to maintain a good relation with their father and with their bosses with their senior authorities so this is very essential for them and children will always be a very prominent part of their life because the fifth lord gets exalted when it comes to the lagna okay so they can feel that uh, sometimes children children are becoming a bit overwhelming for them that can be the feeling and the lagna lord gets exalted in a uh, sign which is ardhi sign which is capricorn so this means that for aries ascendants the best thing is that they try to do things which will give them uh, satisfaction in the long run they should do things with patience that is a difficulty with this ascendant that they can lack patience sometimes but when the lagna lord goes into the 10th house that to in the sign of capricorn it can show that they when they show patience and do things which they want to do in life yes suppose they want to open their own business or they want to work in a company or whatever it is which they like to do themselves then they obtain lot of success lot of name and fame and because 10th house shows things which are outside no outside of the home then the that that means that these people can obtain a lot of success when they are outside when they are outwardly outside doesn't mean necessarily out of the home but their focus has to be more on externals okay so now how this manifests is even if they are doing spiritual practices they need to ensure that they are doing the externals very uh, properly yes so suppose they are doing mantras they need to do it externally properly only then they will see results internally even if they are doing something related to education they need to make notes they need to attend classes they need to talk to the teachers inter rather than saying oh i understand everything now i have internalized everything this may not work for them in any area of their life okay and then uh, if you see the lagna lord mars gets debilitated in the sign of cancer which is their fourth house okay so this means that when they become too much emotional then they suffer very bad because the energy of cancer is not very harmonious for mars not only the fourth house the house sign cancer also so it's like a double problem you see so because of this what happens is when they get too much emotional their energy gets because there there's a lot of energy in them so the energy gets misutilized it gets deviated in wrong forms so this can uh, mean that the person is doing things which they should not do which is not good for themselves for others for their family members or for the society also if they are too much emotional so if the if uh, somebody has a debilitated mars some uh, somebody had asked me that oh do they don't have energy or passion or drive or do they have passion in wrong areas the answer is yes it's there but it is there in the wrong area sometimes okay that depends on the whole chart of course not every mars in cancer is bad i'm not saying it is a bad placement but they can feel that their energy is not getting because uh, utilized properly because what happens is uh, cancer is not a place where you utilize too much of your energy you just sit and relax basically that's what is cancer but when uh, the aries ascendant lord is sitting in cancer that can ha- that can mean that oh there's too much energy with the person too much ideals too much uh, idealism in the person but that's not getting utilized anywhere see the person is just wasting it uh, relaxing and just thinking oh everything will be good in life you don't have to do much so that is not good for them okay so hard work is always necessary because the ruler of the 10th house is saturn so there's there's a lot of hard work which these people should do and when they do it they will get a lot of name and fame and status a lot of recognition a lot of success wherever the wherever the lagna lord gets exalted that is the house where you get lot of success okay so this is how you study the aries ascendant and of course there will be many things which i have not covered here the concept of badaks i will not be covering because i have already made the video there 
and you can watch that secrets of badhaks and then so many other things are there like any planet which is placed uh, in any of these houses will change the results accordingly and we have to see the whole chart and then we have to give uh, the analysis and the prediction rather than just saying oh my jupiter is in the third house what's going to happen for aries ascendant no it doesn't work like that okay we have to see the entire chart all the planets everything which is affecting and only then we can jump to a conclusion so there you go first video aries ascendance so the next video we will be discussing will be on taurus ascendance okay i hope it comes out very soon okay so there you go if you are new to the channel and if you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with somebody who is an aries ascendant or is inquisitive to know about aries and if you are an aries ascendant or if anybody else you know is wanting to know how this ascendant this ascendant works and the planets which are placed in different houses for this ascendant then you can go to my website and book a reading with me you'll find the link to the website in the description of this video go to the description and click in the link okay until next time god is there with you all the time just look to him till the time i speak on taurus okay until next time bye bye see you